Today we're going to talk about an area of the house that we haven't spent a whole lot of time covering so far. The upstairs loft area. Upstairs includes a long, narrow living room, game room kind of area, as well as a full bathroom. We did a few things different up there, including our flooring choices. Spoiler alert, for the game room space, we went with carpet. <gasps> I know, I know, I can already hear a lot of you groaning and freaking out. Why would we put carpet in a very contemporary styled house? I'm going to cover all that information and touch on some of the interior design aspects that we incorporated up there. If you watch closely, you'll pick up on several DIY projects like storage and shelving. If you're interested in learning more about those DIYs and would like to see a tutorial in an upcoming video, leave a comment down below and let me know what you would like to learn. I'm Alicia. And I'm Bryce. And we are building a modern house. We're trying. Hopefully building a modern house. <laughs> we want a cool contemporary house and we need a workshop, but we have an impossible budget. So that means we have to get really creative and be prepared to roll up our sleeves and do some of the work ourselves. It'll be hard, but it will be worth it. This video is brought to you by The Home Depot. I am shocking even myself on this decision, guys. I can honestly say I never thought I would intentionally install carpet in my house. Anyone with kids knows that carpet tends to show wear and tear more than other types of flooring. And let's be honest, it's not the most sanitary option. But I want you to take a listen to what it sounds like in this room upstairs right now. Yeah, that echo goes throughout the entire house. One of the few things carpet is really, really good at is sound attenuation or making things sound a little softer and quieter, which is the main reason why we went to Home Depot to pick out a high quality pad and some soft carpet for this upstairs loft area. Our twin boys are 11 years old. They're gonna be teenagers in just a couple of years. And it's important to us that they feel comfortable inviting their friends to come hang out at our home. They also love to play video games, which can get, let's say, just a little bit noisy when Bryce and I are trying to watch a movie in the living room. When we were looking for home designs, it was important for us to find a floor plan that had a separate hangout space detached from the main kitchen and living area. Although our house is technically a two-story, the only room in the second story upstairs is an 18-foot by 24-foot bonus room. The stock building plans included a full bathroom, and we decided to add a small coat slash storage closet as well. Several months ago, after we were done framing, but before we had the drywallers come in, Bryce and I suited up and applied spray foam insulation to the floor joists and underside of the subflooring upstairs. Even though we knew we wanted to install carpet flooring upstairs, we still wanted to take every step possible to prevent noise from transferring all around the house. After the insulation came drywall and then paint. Finally, it was time to lay some carpet. When we met with a flooring specialist in our local Home Depot, we were able to pick out the kind of carpet we wanted. And after telling her our concerns about sound, she recommended that we used a 7 16th inch thick Tempur-Pedic memory foam carpet pad. Yep, Tempur-Pedic, as in mattresses. A quick little search here on YouTube will provide you with lots and lots of resources if you want to undertake DIY carpet installation. The last rental house we lived in actually had some really, really terribly installed carpet, which convinced us to call in the professionals for this job. I don't want to be stepping on an exposed tack strip with my bare feet in the middle of the night. That, along with the fact that the Home Depot was including free professional installation with the purchase of carpet and pad. Our installer's name is Diego, and I am so impressed with how quickly he's working. He got the entire pad done in maybe 40 minutes, and now he's fitting the carpet, and it looks like he's gonna get that done really fast too. I was honestly shocked to see only a single installer was sent out to install the carpet. But I gotta say, Diego was a machine. He seemed to have no trouble bringing the giant roll of carpet up the stairs and moving and flipping everything around by himself. With the loft being an area that's going to see a lot of foot traffic from kids, 
We really wanted a durable and most importantly, stain resistant carpet. Design wise, I wanted something a little bit more clean cut and formal looking. So the product that we selected that would meet both of our needs and wants is from Life Proof Carpet. It's a short pile dense carpet with a consistent diamond pattern throughout called Aura. The color that we chose is called Virtual Taupe. We ended up needing to have one seam and I'll admit, I was a little concerned about how well we were gonna be able to match up that diamond pattern. Once again, Diego proved that he is a total pro and was able to line up the pattern perfectly. I honestly can't even tell where it is anymore. Before we could move into the house last month, we still needed to tackle the flooring in the attached upstairs bathroom. As I'm sure you can imagine, we decided we didn't want to go with carpet in that room. Today's project, floors. This week's project, finish the entire upstairs bathroom. The entire bathroom in a couple days. Two days, that's all we got. So we're gonna make the most of it. We get to do my most favorite DIY project in the world. My favorite, favorite construction project to do. What's that, honey? Oh, it's gotta be tile. Yay. It's just the greatest. We get to install tile. I've done a fair amount of tile in the past. Every time I do a big tile project, I swear I will never do another one. And yet, here I am doing another tile project. Even though I don't love tile, trying to find a tile contractor right now is just crazy. Everybody's so busy and understandably, it's pretty expensive to hire out tiles. So this is a project we decided to take on ourselves. And the bathroom is relatively small. It shouldn't take us too long. The tile you got is kind of interesting. It'll be, it'll be cool to see how that goes down. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the tile installed. It's kind of dramatic for me. So I'm a little nervous, but kind of excited. I like to change up my home design pretty frequently. So when it comes to something as difficult to remove and expensive as tile, I typically stick with the basics. I guess because the upstairs bathroom is an extra bathroom that's not gonna be used all the time, I was feeling kind of brave. I chose a dramatic black and white pattern hexagon tile from Marola Tile. It's a modern porcelain tile that can actually be installed indoors or out, but it kind of has a look of a traditional glazed concrete tile. The first step in the installation was to cover up the wood subfloor with cement backer board. The cement board provides a porous and rigid substrate that the thin set mortar and tile will easily bond with. It also helps prevent cracks from the flexible plywood subfloor from transferring up through the tile. We are by no means tile experts. If you're thinking about taking on a tile flooring project yourself, especially upstairs, I highly recommend that you get tips from a professional first. Before we could start bringing tile in, we had to choose which direction we wanted to lay the pattern. We looked online and saw a few different options, but we ended up choosing a design which we called a starburst. Looking back, that's probably one of the more complex and time consuming patterns that we could have chosen, but you know us, gluttons for punishment. From what I've noticed, one of the things that really makes a tile installation look professional is making sure that the layout is clean before you get started. We took the time to chalk out our center lines, as well as a couple of midpoints, just to make sure as we were working that the tiles were staying square to the room and to help prevent our grout lines from shrinking or growing. Before we started setting the tile, we remembered that we were planning on installing baseboards on top of the tile, which typically makes the flooring installation a little bit easier because you don't have to be so precise with the seams where the tile meets the wall since they're going to be covered up with molding. 
We thought we were going to be able to gang cut all the half tiles that ran along the sides of the wall, which would save us a lot of time, but we quickly discovered with the starburst pattern that we were using, almost every half tile was oriented in a different direction. This meant lots of trips up and down the stairs to mark and cut each partial tile so that it would fit in its specific location. For most of the floors, we were able to spread and comb the thin set as usual. But for some of the tiles along the edge and in the tricky spots, like under the vanity, we needed to back butter the tiles, which means we applied the thin set directly to the back of the tile instead of the floor. Last tile. We went with 1 8 inch spacers between our tiles, which gives us a fairly small grout line, but is still pretty forgiving. However, if I were to do it all over again, I think we should have used 1 16th inch spacers instead to better match the white lines on the tiles. All right, it's the next day. It's been about 24 hours. Tile looks pretty good still, so I think it's time to remove the spacers and to grout. As you can probably tell from the dark sky in the videos, we've pulled a lot of late nights recently. With me helping our boys in school and finishing up some other odds and ends around the house and Bryce still working full time, our plates have been extremely full lately. We chose a bright white grout to tie in with the pattern of the tiles. In my opinion, if you ever decide to use white grout for a project, don't buy the cheap stuff. Trust me, especially with white, it's worth the extra bit of money to get a high quality grout. Most traditional cement-based grouts aren't actually a true bright white color, despite what their name might imply. As you can expect, traditionally, white grout is also very prone to staining, even if it's been sealed properly. We used a modified calcium-based grout called Prism by Custom Building Products in the color Arctic White. It resists stains and actually cures harder than traditional cement-based grout. And the feature that makes me the most happy is that it dries to a perfectly colorless bright white. Once the grout was dry, we were able to lower on the toilet and wax ring and then start working on the pretty stuff. There's a three foot wide recessed space behind the door of the bathroom, which was just begging for some storage. Bryce and I fabricated and installed five floating shelves to give us a place to store things like towels and knickknacks. If you follow Pneumatic Addict on Instagram, you may have seen some sneak peeks of our kitchen where we installed very similar looking shelves using a different technique and the same one and three quarter inch thick poplar. Don't worry, the next Building Modern on a Budget episode is going to cover kitchen and baths and I'll go into all the nitty gritty details about how we created the floating shelves. We added the baseboards, touched up the paint, and then it was finally time to bring in furnishings to make this upstairs loft and bathroom functional spaces. OG Pneumatic Attic viewers may recognize a few recycled furniture builds, but the bonus room also received a few new fun DIY tutorials, like the blanket bars on the long wall and the leather strap art ledge. Let me know in the comment section if those projects are something you'd like me to create a video on. I have big plans for that random IKEA cabinet over by the bathroom. It's going to be turned into a kitchenette wet bar area. And yes, I'll be sharing all the details in a separate video.
I'll be the first one to say the tile in the bathroom is dramatic. It's a little bolder than my usual style, but I honestly love it. Once we saw the dark floors installed, we decided the dark gray IKEA vanity needed to be brightened up a little bit. It's nothing that an hour and a half and a couple of rolls of contact paper couldn't fix. It kind of brings in a mid-century vibe, which I'm always down for. If you're thinking, hey, I think something's missing, you're absolutely right. The doors to both the bathroom and the closet are still in the painting process, but we plan to get those up ASAP. We still need to install the backsplash, which I am really, really excited about. All I can say at this point is that it involves acrylic and vinyl. It's gonna be good. But at this point, these are the only two finished rooms in the house, more or less. And I can't tell you how good it feels to check them off our to-do list. This looks nice. This looks really nice. And it's sitting. <laughs> yeah, the room turned out pretty good. This room came out awesome. That's one down at least. One finished room. Did a good job. Babe. Almost finished room. I'm tired. Let's just take a nap. Sounds great. It's got carpet, so we can actually do that. Mm -hmm. The Home Depot has been one of my most loyal and favorite sponsors for several years now. We were fortunate enough to be able to partner with the Home Depot for the flooring up in the loft, and they covered the expenses of all the materials. But we were extremely fortunate that the biggest cost of the flooring was completely covered. The carpet that we chose to use is called Aura from Lifeproof Carpet in the color Virtual Taupe. If you want to go order that carpet right now, the current price is $2.69 a square foot. Right now, the Home Depot offers free professional installation for carpet with a minimum order. That's just another reason why carpet can potentially be a really affordable flooring option. Had we been paying for the carpet pad and installation ourselves, it would have cost us around $1,202. Not including the other materials that we needed for our tile project, the tile alone cost $603. Since we decided to do the installation ourselves, we were able to save that money. But just to give you a ballpark idea, in our area, professional tile installation runs for about $3 a square foot. As you saw in the video, we needed to purchase some additional materials to be able to install our tile flooring. We spent around $105 for all materials, including Thin set, cement board, screws, grout, all of it. At this point in the build, we haven't added any expense to our construction loan. So it still comes in at a little over $205,000. Don't worry you guys, as I have mentioned, the house is more or less complete and that number will be updated very shortly. It goes up a lot. We paid for the additional tile material expenses out of pocket. So that puts our out of pocket cost at $39,624. As I've mentioned before, we've got lots of really exciting content coming out, including the rest of the Building Modern on a Budget series and the final reveal of the more or less finished house. So make sure that you're subscribed to the Pneumatic Datic channel and you're receiving notifications so you don't miss any updates. Once again, thank you guys for being patient. I promise new videos are coming very soon. If you wanna get caught up on the full Building Modern on a Budget house building series, check out this playlist. If you like other types of DIY content, check out this video as well. I've got three new, unique Building Modern on a Budget videos in the works, so make sure that you're subscribed and receiving notifications so you don't miss an update. As always, thanks for watching, guys.